Okay. We're in a special spot here. We don't have anybody at the stream though. I wanted to give you guys, this is a pre-stream, and uh, I wanted to give you guys my version of a pep talk, or kind of uh, fail to uh, fail to do one, but give it my best shot. I tried to do this in the car, it didn't fucking work. Um, I'm just gonna talk for a minute. You guys, you guys don't have to defend me, you know, like I've got all the defense that I need. You guys need to do what you believe is right. And if that's not uh, in line with what I do, then you need to leave me behind. And that's just the way that it is, you know, there is no, uh, I mean, the whole way that we got here, like the, the only reason that people can't leave presidents alone is because it's like their team, right? Like they, they invest so much in the idea of a person that it's supersede their, their notion of it, what they hold overshadows their acts. And then that person isn't held accountable, right? And the reality is that, you know, when all this is said and done, you know, there's a good chance that I won't even be here, right? And in that regard, it's actually really stupid to put all your eggs into my basket. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that, uh, I was listening to this bird for a minute. I think that Yeah, we're at the river, John. Yeah, buddy. This this is a this is a special place I wanted to take you guys take you guys here. This is a place that I go that nobody else goes. Um I think that there's a big misconception with things like truth and honor, right? And especially, especially from like in, you know, because of our sense of nationalism as a country, we often think about honor and uh, righteousness and stuff. We, we, we like attribute that to like who society tells us that should, you know, be given to. And then society has a real problem with misunderstanding that honor is not a possessive trait like it's not something that you wield and and get like it's not like uh you know it's not like uh tuberculosis or something where it's like you get it and now it's there forever it's something that is outside of yourself because you can lose it at any second right so like you could you could be an honorable person and then people can recognize honor in you and then you you make a choice that demonstrates that you're dishonorable and then that that completely overshadows whatever you did before so right there it demonstrates that you know honor isn't a possessive characteristic of a person right it's like a choice Let's walk a little bit. Let's walk and think. This is a pre-stream. We're still doing a, we're gonna do a stream tonight, but I wanted to touch tips with you guys and uh, just think out loud for a minute, you know? Just a tip. So the, uh, the thing about honor is that it's something that can't be issued at all. You know, like the way that money is. Like money's, money's issued, right? And a person can, can be rich and then they can just possess the money and then they're rich. 
But Honor's not like that at all. It can't be issued at all, except by a lie. Like if you issue it under a lie, you know, you can trick somebody into assuming that it's honor. But if it's not really honor, if it's deceit, then the honor was never there in the first place, right? Whereas like the money, if it was there, it's just there, you know, there's no doubt. If the money's there, it's there. But honor, you can be tricked into, you know, if you don't have a good solid concept of it, you can assume or be, or be lied to and told that somebody's honorable and you not be aware of who they are, really are. And so it's kind of like this fleeting thing, right? It's, it's like this, this thing that's outside of ourselves that we don't possess in the same way that we possess physicality, right? And that's a, something that I don't think, I mean, I certainly didn't understand it when I was a kid, right? Like when I was going through the military, like I always, uh, I always really listened to the shit that they would tell us and uh, really pay, pay attention to the, uh, like, like the army corps values, right? Even when I was a private, you know, like everybody else would be falling asleep and shit, but I, I really like listen to that shit and believed it, but I don't think that they were for real. Honestly. I mean, in a sense, in a sense. Yeah. But, uh, I think, I think they had the same understanding as everybody else. And, uh, No, honor, honor, it can't be issued and it can't really be counterfeited. It can't for a short time, but it can't last forever. You can fake it for a while, but eventually people figure it out. I was thinking about, there was an email that somebody sent me that, uh, I'm not going to put the guy out there or anything, but just, just as like an example, you know, I, I had like an email exchange with somebody and they, and they asked me like, why do I care so much? And they said, you know, I don't stick out my neck for anybody. Like, why, why do you care so much? And when he said that, it reminded me of this, uh, something that happened to me when I first started learning about all this shit. And I tried to, like, I approached my dad and, uh, told them about it and tried my best to like give him the best understanding that I could so that he would understand like where I was coming from, which is a, you know, like a place of love. And, uh, I didn't know what he was going to say, you know, when I, when I told him this shit and I was really hoping that he would give me like the inspirational dad talk, you know, uh, of like telling me the right thing to do. Right. This is, this would have been like years ago. And, uh, and I don't talk to my dad that much. Like at least, especially not on like a deep level like that, right? Like talking about real shit. And so when I, when I talked to him, what he told me, what he said was, who cares? Like that was, that was his exact words. He was like, well, who cares? You know, what does it matter? And, uh, like it really disturbed me when he first said that, you know, for a while, but after some time, I realized it was the most motivating thing that he could have ever said or that anybody could have said to me. And the uh, email that the guy sent me reminded me of that. And so I wanted to tell you that story. And I view, I view, you know, it's really easy to get um, black pilled and to view humanity as like cattle, you know, and, and just say what is is what is. Uh, but that's kind of a notion and a viewpoint that discounts the concept of things like honor and truth and what they really are because uh honor is a uh, something that's fleeting and exists only in the immediate moment that you're in in entropy
And as soon as you choose, make the choice to turn away from it, as you see, as you, you know, see the world, like knowingly, then that's when it, that's when it goes away. But then if you face it again and accept it with all your heart, then it's like suddenly you're, you are honorable again, right? Which is really interesting. It's just, it's just a very interesting non-physical thing you know obviously something in a completely it's not here like it's not i mean it is here right in, in a sense but not for like not for people not for perspective and psychology like they don't it's not in their body it's outside of the body right it's situational it's the way that you interface with everything that's outside of you and how you determine using your senses in your mind to interface with the world you know and the opportunity arises right but it never arises when there's no challenge, right? Like if you don't have adversity, if you don't face adversity, then you have no opportunity to ever choose something that's honorable, right? Like seriously, if you, if you, just, like if you just sat in a chair your whole life and then didn't move and nothing changed in your environment, then the most honorable thing that you could do would be to stand up out of the chair, right? Like if that was your your entire existence. Well, that's kind of, that's kind of like what all this is, right? It's just the, uh, it's an opportunity to reflect honor, not to possess it, right? And for people, for humanity, for all over the world, everybody. It's not just the United States. All this stuff that's going on here that we consider the United States, the, the, the problem of the United States is not isolated the United States. It's the entire world. It's all of humanity. And so, although it can seem like a bummer, you have to understand that we're actually extremely lucky because the prior generation had no discomfort to produce the opportunity to do what's right, you know? And when they did, it was usually fake, you know? And they were tricked. And then so they had, they had like a, like a, a counterfeited opportunity that then, you know, like disappeared into the ether, just like evaporated, because it wasn't real, right? And then that's how we got here. So we're, we're really lucky in that sense and that we do get an opportunity. It's like, a, it's like a, even though it's going to be hard, it's going to be really difficult, and there's going to be a lot of suffering, no matter what, right? Even if I stopped right now, the, you, we have a lot of suffering ahead. We've already given away all of the easy days for the next who knows how many generations. And we're kind of uh, past due on them. That's, that's what I was thinking about. The fact that, like what, what it is about me, the only reason that I feel like there's no, you know, there's like, there's like some kind of hunger inside of me that can't be quenched. And it's because there's like a, an imbalance and a misjustice in the world. And, uh, you know, the material and the, the the, the money and the material and the things that I used to, you know, get shoved in my face to just shut up or to think it's too big of a problem to handle, to, to face. That's all kind of gone away, you know? And I'm realizing that, like, over time I started to realize that I don't really have anything else. Like, all that physical shit doesn't even fucking matter. And the only thing that I ever had and could ever really possess was the opportunity, you know, the opportunity to reflect on her and what I would, and what I would do with it.
I think you guys should be really careful when, you know, when you're reading uh, comments in opposition to this, this, like, whatever the hell you want to call this that we're doing. I don't know what I'm doing, that you're doing, that we're doing. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> whatever you want to call what this is. You should be careful of what people say. And by careful, I mean you should watch them. And you should, you should see who it is, right? And you should think, what, what would possibly motivate somebody to not face truth? And there's a lot of different things, but you can't be for sure. I mean, you don't know somebody, why, why they say the things they do. But there is a reason, right? There's some reason. And you should think about it. When you see opposition. I don't know. I don't know who these people are. You know? But I do I do wonder that. I wonder you know why Why would somebody be opposed to facing truth? Do they have something to gain? Is it against their interest? Do they have an interest that's in opposition? And so it's necessarily opposite? Or is it, is it that, is it that in order to accept what they actually see with their own, you know, senses that they're given and to accept what they actually see will cause such a displacement of everything that's been the foundation of their life has been built on that it's too, it's too painful to bear, right? And it's actually less painful to say that you don't see what you see, right? In comparison, in the short, in the shortcut, right? And in that way, that's why I look at this entire situation when I have opposition. There's not much that can motivate me more, especially when somebody says it's hopeless or asks me, why do I care? Who cares? There's not much that they could say that would motivate me more. In the long game. Because I know that they're victims. You know what I mean? And that they don't have the opportunity to see the world as it is. And I don't want to live in a world like that. And I, and I would ask something else. I'd ask that like, all the people that are too weak to morally face what's going on and accept reality are the same people, you know, like the people that are, that are coming in these videos and saying that like Dugan is an anti-Semite or whatever the fuck they want to think, that I have some kind of prejudice against any person. All those people are the same people that got us here. And I know what's gonna happen, you know, in a sense, like left and right brackets. I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but what I can tell you is that what is going to happen is that regardless of their intention or best wishes, the situation is going to come to the surface in one way or another. It was gonna to come to the surface whether I fucking come up here and tell you about it or not. And when that situation came up, those people would fucking hunt down the Jews and kill them. Do you know that? Those are the same people that are gonna pump up the Chinese war who already condemned the Afghanistan war and the Iraq war. But when those two wars were getting started, they were all on board.
Now they're off board. Then they're going to go on board again when it's time to go to war with China. And they're not going to be here to fucking help you when shit is not in their fucking favor. Not only are they not going to help you or be here, they're going to be the ones that are going to support what's going to happen. And people don't understand that because they don't, they're incredibly miseducated of the, of the past. And so they can't, they can't identify what's going on in the present or have an assessment of the logical route of the future. But the future's coming, whether you want to or not. Trotsky said, you may not like the dialectic, but the dialectic likes you. And there's not a lot of shit that Trotsky said or thought about that I was that into, but I do agree with him there. I probably, I probably butchered that quote. That's okay. Close enough. He, he, he doesn't get, he doesn't get like, uh, you know, I'm not going to like rack my brain trying to look at his fucking quotes. The reality is that all these people that think that they're defending Jews right now by not calling out the situation don't understand what's going on. And they don't understand, they're, they're, they're in their present state, they're not capable of recognizing reality. And so they, they only recognize synthetic reality. And so they erroneously believe that they're like actually protecting Jews by, you know, hiding history and what's going on. And that's, that's incorrect. They're actually a part of, you know, they're, they're unwittingly a part of this entire fucking thing. And when this shit comes out of the wash on the other side, like, I'm not going to explain this because it's, it would be a lot of info, but you know, like the Jews are going to get fucking kicked out of the United States and that could be a long time away, but that's going to happen because, uh, the shit that's going on is so extreme that uh, it's going to be at some point too conspicuous to ignore. And the people that are like, think that they're defending Jews, they're so miseducated on the situation that they don't understand that that's the entire point of all this is to fucking kick Jews out of the United States. And they don't know that. And they look at it like there's just these neo-Nazis that are, you know, trying to fucking figure out who killed the 100 million people in Eastern Europe, you know? Like, <laughs> those, those, those Nazis. I can assure you that I'm not a Nazi because I don't believe in socialism or capitalism. I think they're both equally worthless. And when the time comes that this shit comes around and everything comes to the surface and when those people realize if they have the capacity to realize the serious serious error that we've all made as humanity i'm not going to hold it against them you know because if they're willing to accept honor when they see it and recognize it then i have to recognize their honor because that's the way that it fucking works I'm not going to stand here and say, I told you so, because we're all under a thick veil of deceit. And I, I know that they wouldn't do that now, like afford me the same reciprocity as they are now, but I know that once they open their eyes and understand, and if they were who they really are, if they can attain that, then they will do that for me. If we can get there, if we can get there. I think that's about it. I just want to share my thoughts with you. We're going to do a stream tonight. It's going to be after nine o'clock and uh, I apologize. I don't know when, but it'll be after nine o'clock. 
and uh, we'll we'll try to I'll try to get some shit in order on the thoughts about how to handle the, the situation that's coming up. I hope I really hope that you guys understand that like basically this whole thing that's coming up is like <laughs> it's really ironic because after all the like Alex Jones and like gay frogs and all that stuff, this is like the real one, you know. And by now, everybody's so burnt out on it that they don't even care. Like, she's just too crazy to even care. And everybody's too much, everybody's in too much of a constant emergency to have the capacity to even put any energy towards it, right? To face it. It's just like too big and too evil to uh, face. And that's that's the time that it really comes, right? Like, <laughs> so this one, this one that's coming up, this is the real deal. This is the real deal. This isn't, this isn't a, false you know uh alarm it, it may be a little slow like i don't know if it's gonna i thought this shit was going to rapidly accelerate o over five years ago and it didn't but um you can rest assured that this is the real deal and uh i hope i hope everybody can face it with honor and uh and truth and I hope that, regardless of how it works out, I hope that everybody can find some kind of peace in that. We're gonna do we're gonna do a uh, stream after probably after nine, maybe like nine or ten, probably somewhere in there in that hour. We'll start it. Well, I don't know. You, you might be listening to this and think it's stupid as shit, but it's just shit that I was thinking about, and I want to share it with you. Uh, maybe you'll think about it later. You're thinking about it differently later. And uh, you guys have fun. I'll see you later on tonight.